Number nine, Jennifer Maldonado. On May the 21st of 2020, California resident Jennifer Maldonado fatally stabbed Angela Betts, aged 25, at her Bakersfield apartment. At the time, Betts was with an unidentified man who'd also been in a romantic relationship with 21-year-old Maldonado when the attack occurred. The latter had grown jealous after discovering that her lover was accompanied by another woman, which led to her violent confrontation. During the ill-fated altercation, Maldonado reportedly grabbed a knife and stabbed Betts through one of her leg's femoral arteries. The victim began bleeding profusely and was rushed to the hospital in a desperate attempt to preserve her life, but the car crashed before their arrival. Betts subsequently died from hemorrhage shock. It would take two years for the police to release the victim's phone back to her family, at which time her sister, Serena Ricaldi, uploaded a video to TikTok in which she revealed Betts' final selfies, taken less than an hour before she was murdered. Raquel Day's viral video also detailed how Betts' call to 911 had lasted for over three minutes. In the incident's immediate aftermath, Maldonado fled the scene and managed to evade capture for eight months before finally being apprehended. Family members of the victim were appalled when the prosecution offered Maldonado a plea deal, reducing her charges from first-degree murder to manslaughter. In spite of the protests and victims' impact testimonies, she was sentenced to just eight years and eight months behind bars on April the 28th of 2022. Number eight, Daniel Grogan. British man Daniel Grogan, along with eight of his family members, carried out a violent attack on 18-year-old Jay Sewell in London, leading to the latter's death on December the 11th of 2018. 20-year-old Grogan convinced his parents, Robert and Anne, 57 and 54 respectively, along with his 22-year-old brother, Peter, his 29-year-old sister, Francesca, his 19-year-old cousin, and two friends to help him murder the young man who was his ex-partner's new boyfriend. Gemma Hodder had reportedly dated Grogan for two years but informed the police that he'd become deranged after she decided to end their relationship. He allegedly locked her in a car and bit her on the forehead when she refused to give him her phone. In the days leading up to Sewell's murder, Grogan had threatened to take his own life, holding a scalpel to his throat and also used a spear key to break into Hodder's apartment, violently attacking her before neighbors intervened on her behalf. Sewell and Hodder decided to meet with Grogan in an attempt to settle the matter, but were instead ambushed by the young man and his family. The couple, along with friend Charlie Pamphlet, tried to retreat back to their car but were unable to escape the assault which involved the use of knives, baseball bats, and even a four-foot-long firefighter axe. Hodder managed to drive the two injured men to the ER. Pamphlet made a full recovery while Sewell succumbed to his injuries a short time later. An autopsy conducted during the subsequent investigation revealed that the victim had been stabbed two times in the legs and once in the chest, piercing his aorta. Grogan and his family denied any involvement in the murder, but were ultimately tried and convicted. He was sentenced to life in prison plus eight years for wounding pamphlet, as well as violent disorder. Four of his family members, including his parents, were found guilty of manslaughter and received sentences that ranged from three to 14 years behind bars, while the rest were only charged with a violent disorder. Number seven, Meika Kukukova. On April the 5th of 2014, 48-year-old British millionaire Andrew Bush was returning from a trip with his girlfriend, Maria Koroteva, when he was fatally shot by his ex-partner, Maker Marika Kukukova, in his Spanish mansion near Malaga. Bush had broken up with the 26-year-old swimsuit model six months earlier and had taken out a restraining order against her after she'd refused to accept the end of their relationship. Koroteva, aged 23, discovered the former lover in Bush's bedroom, wearing pajamas, and ran outside to the car to alert her boyfriend. He instructed her to call the police, then went inside to speak with his ex. A few minutes later, Kukakova emerged from the mansion and told Koroteva 
that Bush had given her permission to take the Hummer. Korateva, who hadn't been able to call the police due to her depleted phone battery, handed the keys over to her love rival later testifying that she'd been too shocked to refuse. She rushed back into the house and discovered Bush's lifeless body. He'd reportedly been shot once in the shoulder and twice in the head. Four days later, Kukakova, who'd fled the country in the aftermath, surrendered herself to the police in her home country of Slovakia. During the ensuing murder trial, she claimed to have been retrieving clothes she'd left during the ensuing murder trial. She claimed to have been retrieving clothes she'd left behind when Bush and his new girlfriend arrived at the house. Kukakova assured the court that the gun had gone off during a subsequent altercation and that she hadn't meant to hurt her former partner. Nevertheless, she was eventually found guilty of murder in May of 2016 and consequently sentenced to 15 years in prison. Number 6. Sarah Williams On January the 14th of 2016, 60-year-old Sadie Hartley was stunned with a cattle prod and stabbed over 41 times by her love rival, Sarah Williams, at her Helmshaw, England home. 35-year-old Williams, along with friend and accomplice Katrina Walsh, had been plotting the vicious crime for over a year before finally committing it. She'd become obsessed with the victim's partner, Ian Johnston, a 57-year-old former firefighter, following a brief affair and refused to accept his decision to end their involvement. The murderers had scouted Hartley's house, put a tracking device in Johnston's car, and bought burner phones, a taser, and binoculars in the months prior to the attack. Williams and Walsh waited until Johnston left for a skiing trip to the Swiss Alps to spring into action, ensuring that the victim would be alone. They knocked on Hartley's door and immobilized her with a cattle prod before unleashing what was later described as an orgy of violence. When police were called to the scene, they recovered CCTV footage showing the two culprits waiting outside the victim's residence and would later find Walsh's diary, which described the plot to kill Hartley in detail. Upon being found guilty of murder, Williams and Walsh were sentenced to 30 and 25 years in prison, respectively. Number 5. Ryan Donellan On August the 29th of 2016, 30-year-old Ryan Donellan brutally murdered his former partner's new boyfriend, Stephen Chadwick, also 30, after luring him into a trap in Harpuri, England. Don Ellen and Nicola McKeegan, aged 25, had been dating for nine years and shared a son together. Although McKeegan ultimately decided to put an end to their relationship, she reassured the man that she would never get in between him and their child. Don Ellen grew increasingly agitated with their new arrangement and demanded to know if his ex was dating someone else, claiming he wanted to shake his hand. Chadwick agreed to meet with Don Ellen, but was stunned when he initially asked if he would look after McKeegan and the child. Since they had only been dating for a short time, Chadwick subsequently attempted to leave, but Don Ellen pulled out a knife he'd been concealing and stabbed him nine times. In March of 2017, the man was found guilty of murder and sentenced to a minimum of 25 years in prison. Number 4. Whitney Franks between August the 17th and September the 1st of 2020, Sports Direct employee Whitney Franks attempted to hire a hitman to murder her co-worker, Ruth Rutner, via the dark web. 26-year-old Franks began devising her sinister plot after discovering that Rutner, a newcomer at the Buckinghamshire store, was also dating her boyfriend, General Manager James Prest. The latter was already involved in a serious relationship with a third woman, the mother of his two children, and had allegedly encouraged the rivalry between his lovers. On September the 2nd, Carl Miller, a BBC investigative journalist, uncovered Franks's request on the dark web, which contained Rutner's address as well as her physical description. Franks had offered $1,000 in cryptocurrency to carry out the murder. Eight days after Miller reported the post to the police, the suspect was arrested during questioning. She told officers that she'd simply wanted to check if the dark web was a scam. Franks was charged with one count of soliciting murder and on the 22nd of September was jailed for 12 years. Number 3. Mohammed Shiraz Bashir 41-year-old Mohammed Shiraz Bashir reportedly warned the police in Yorkshire, England 
that he planned to harm his girlfriend's former lover, 34-year-old Craig Preston, days before he ultimately murdered him. On August the 21st of 2016, Bashir, accompanied by his girlfriend, 24-year-old Leonie Mason and three teenage accomplices, beat Preston to a bloody pulp before discarding his lifeless body on the moors. The victim's remains were discovered the following morning. Bashir had threatened his love rival multiple times before the fatal attack and was actually detained for the threats on August the 13th, eight days before Preston's death. He'd eventually been released due to insufficient evidence. An autopsy revealed that Preston had died as a result of a head injury sustained in the assault. Investigators discovered messages the five suspects had exchanged in which they detailed their murderous plan and shared pictures of the victim's body in the trunk of a car. Bashir and Mason were convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison, while their three accomplices, whose identities weren't released to the public, were each found guilty of manslaughter. Today's topic was requested by Kristen Mitchell. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Els Klotmans 26-year-old school teacher Els Klotmans sabotaged her perceived love rival's parachute during a skydiving trip in Flanders, Belgium, on November the 18th of 2006. Els Van Doren, aged 38, had become involved with fellow skydiver Marcel Summers, in whom Klotmans also held a romantic interest. When Van Duren attempted to deploy her parachute mid-air, she was disengaged from her skydiving partners. Her helmet camera showed her frantically attempting to activate the reserve parachute to no avail, as the cords to both mechanisms had been cut, and she tragically plummeted to her death. Following the incident, Klotmans was interviewed by the police along with the other members of the skydiving club when she received word that investigators wished to speak with her a second time. She attempted to take her own life. Detectives discovered that both women had been involved romantically with Summers and that Klotmans had had ample opportunity to sabotage her rival's parachute throughout the weekend preceding the incident. She was formally charged in January of 2007, but her trial didn't begin until three years later. Klotmans pleaded not guilty, but was nevertheless convicted of murder on October the 22nd of 2010, after which she was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Number 1. Dennis Miller In 2020, Dennis Miller, aged 22, viciously murdered his love rival, 26-year-old Denis Gubarev, in front of the woman they'd both been competing for at Novosibirsk State University in Russia. The 18-year-old woman, identified only as Sophia K, had decided to break up with Miller three months prior to the deadly incident and began dating Gubarev soon after. Miller, a psychology postgraduate who worked at the university, allegedly quizzed his students on whether he should kill his rival. However, none of the students reported the alarming episode to the police. On the day of the murder, Miller and Gubarev had begun arguing in front of Sophia. Miller eventually offered to forget everything and hug it out with his rival. Gubarev refused, at which point Miller pulled him close and stabbed him to death. After the police arrived, the suspect was allegedly smiling as officers handcuffed him and openly admitted to killing Gubarev. Sophia K was found dead in her apartment shortly after the altercation. Although the police initially suspected that she'd harmed herself, there were no signs of violence at the scene and coroners later theorized that she died of a broken heart, brought on by the shock of seeing her ex murder her boyfriend. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be cheated out of all your money or be cheated on by your partner? Let us know in the comments section below.